A3 is the next block and we have our first applique block of the quilt and so what we have here is pretty straightforward you've got one big square for the background and then you've got four football shapes for the center and the trick is how to get it into the center so in your pack you have four footballs but you have this piece too okay this piece is going to be used for placement what we're going to do is I'm going to baste my fabric on my background square, flip it over, take a light pencil mark with a ruler and do an X. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I will place this with all four corners on the X and staple it down. And so once that's stapled down, and then I need to baste these as well, um, I'll place these in position and staple those down. I staple because stapling paper seemed kind of like a non-brainer, a no-brainer, but um, it also has two anchor points that are relatively strong. Um, I'm using a high thread count batik, so the hole that the staple makes should go away. If it shows, it should go away with steaming. You just want to make sure you don't snag it. And I've not had a problem before with the last quilt, so I'll continue to do that. With these for basting, you're gonna I'm gonna do a gathering stitch. So I'm gonna take a knot and come up from the front here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take my needle through here and come up here, and then I'm gonna start. I, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna start this way, and so then I will do gathering stitch through here, and then I can pull it. And then the, the, the uh, I'm going to go back through here at the end of this arch and then pull it down. And then I'm going to come back up from a different point near there and then do the same thing on this side and then pull it shut. So you're going to end up having a lot, of, a lot better curve than you would if you were trying to fold this over because you're going to get a lot of points showing and inconsistencies with the curve that's the kind of thing that happens so um, I'm gonna go ahead and baste all my pieces and then I'm gonna go ahead and do my my pencil X on the background so then I can place my center piece so I basted my square and I've got my pencil line I'm not sure if you can quite see it but there's a line here and a line here that intersects in the middle I'm gonna take this center portion and I'm gonna line it up on all four lines. I got this two, and once you line it up on all four lines, because you centered it to begin with, this also will be centered. Okay, so then I'm gonna keep holding it there, and I'm gonna take a stapler, because it's paper and all that, so I'm gonna take a stapler and just staple it right there to keep it there. This way, if you pin it, you get this dimensional effect and it pulls it up and then it changes where it ends up. So this is a really good way to keep it centered. I'm sure there's different ways to do it as well. This is just what works for me. And then um, I just, what I do at the end is I pry this up and pull it. But um, this is what's gonna center my football pieces. So I'm gonna set this aside a minute and now we're gonna baste these football pieces. All right, so I got a thread that shows up on black. Normally I use black, but for this purpose I'll use this. So I'm gonna start, because I'm right-handed and it's easier for me, I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna come up right about there and I've got a knot on this side. So I'm gonna start right about here-ish and you don't want to be too close to the edge, but you don't want to be too close to this bottom either because you're going to base it, you're going to do this twice essentially. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do a gathering stitch, which is just a, you know, in and out kind of a thing. And then pull through. I'm going to do this all the way across the top. And 
then I'm going to stop right about there, pull it through, and then I'm going to come in right about the same spot on the other side and pull it through to the other side. And then I'm going to pull on it and it's going to pull this down and pull it tighter against the edge. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and with a stiletto for something to pull on because I don't have fingernails. I'm going to come in higher. This is why you want to do it closer to the edge. Come in higher and I'm going to then thread base it to the paper. But as I go, I'm going to pull. You want a nice tight edge so that you really grab that curve. So I will go across this edge as well. Now that I've reached the end, I'm going to come up near the knot that I made the first time. And when I'm pulling, I want to do really tight. That's why I don't want to use my needle, because I've snapped needles before. So just to be on the safe side. And then this one, I'm going to do the opposite direction. So on down here, I don't want to get this I don't want to get this tag in there too much so I'm going to start off off of the tag but near the edge ish and I'll gather stitch across the edge And then I'm going to go through that same corner over here in a different spot. You're going to take all this out when you're done anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. You just want it for tightness. And then you pull it again. And then you, again you go back across it with the stitch. You go back across, pull it tight, so then just thread base it to the paper. So, when you get to this edge, I just get in under stitches and tie it off. This is also covered in my applique video or basing your pieces or something like that but I just wanted to cover it since this is the first applique block. So then I'm going to snip this off. Alright so now I have a football shape with little tags on it. You're going to stuff these underneath when you applique it. But you want it as tight as possible, not only to make sure that you maintain a nice shape, but because you have to line it up here as best you can. So the idea is to put it right against this edge and then the points. I usually like to put the tags on the outside so you can see the point line really good. So the points are going to be lined up on that pencil line also. So that one's not on the pencil line. So it's just a matter of finagling it enough to make sure that this stays in the curve and then this touches this pencil line and this touches this pencil line. And then I'm going to staple it down. And I'm not going to stitch it down until I get all four of them on here because you want to be able to adjust them as you go. So I'm going to make sure that this one's in place the, it, a pretty much as much as I can and then that way I'll have a better chance of making it even, but because it's stapled, I can reposition it if I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and base the other three footballs and then we can work on placement there. 
so I've got all of these stapled on here. The corners are cl really close to the line, but in some cases, I'm not sure if you can quite see that, but they're not exactly touching. What you do is you finagle those and maneuver them into final position as you applique. So that's what I use my stiletto for. My stiletto comes in very handy for applique. So I would pull this over here and then stitch it down and that still maintains this curve. And then the same thing over here. So if you're interested in the actual applique techniques, I have an applique video in my general information section. I'm not going to go through it on this. It makes it a lot longer, but um, this is my positioning. And so now I'm going to go ahead and applique, and I applique with the black thread, and it goes just under. When I come, when I come up from, my, from behind, I'm not going to go on the fold, I'm going to go just behind it a couple of threads so that way when you pull on it, it pulls it straight down rather than out. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I started appliquing on this and I quickly realized that um, because I have to pry this up to get under it, that this paper's in the way. So I'm going to go ahead, I took the staple out. And so I'm just going to go ahead and set this aside. I'm not going to get rid of it completely because I might need it for some reason in a, in a bit, but um, I just wanted to explain why I took it out. So I've got all these applique on here. I'm going to go ahead and just set that aside. I don't need that anymore. I have taken out my staples. I pulled them up with my stiletto. I pried them up from the back and then gently pushed them through the other side. Next thing to do is to take out my basting. And the, this is why you want the knots on the top. So when you're taking out your basting, and I cover this in the applique video, but I'll cover this here too, since this is the first applique block of the quilt. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna snip my knots. That didn't work. I'm gonna go ahead and snip my knots right off of my things here. and pull. They'll come right out. This is why you do it the way you do it. Okay, so I've got my knots gone, and now it's just a matter of pulling this off. Now you just want to start, like this one doesn't want to come out, so I'll start over on this side. I'm going to pull my stitches through. And keep in mind you've got another sec going back the other way, and if you need to clip them, this one's going to be difficult, of course. You need to clip it. But just go ahead and start pulling these out and then pull to get the rest of it out. So that's what the gathering stitch was. I'm going to throw that away and then now that the other one's out, I should be able to pull that. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I can look at the quality of my applique because I'm not happy with this corner. But let me get this pulled out around the other side and then I can look at that a little better. So I've got all my basting out and so now I want to look at this. The idea is that this is one big circle. This corner here I'm not a fan of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more a needle and some more thread and I'm going to Put this get this a little closer now that I've got my basting on I can see it so I'm gonna go around and touch these up a little bit just because that way they're not so sloppy and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a white eraser pink ones for me tend to smear and the smear black so if I take a white eraser and lightly rub this pencil line it'll come right off but um that way I can clean this up a little bit more. All right, so I cleaned up my corners a bit. I know that that one's showing on camera and I know that this kind of, there's a thing sticking out here. But what I'm gonna do is when I take out my papers, I can get some of this stuff to cram under there. This is just a knot of my thread, it's not fabric. Um, and I cover, and if you're wondering about the paper removal, cause there's paper in the black thing and on top of paper here, um, I do have a paper removal video, but real quick, 
once I surround this with the border, I can then take out the square because it has to be completely surrounded before you can remove the papers. When I take out this square, I'm going to see the lines where I stitch down, okay? What I'm going to do then is I'm going to cut this fabric, not this fabric, but this background fabric. I'm going to cut the red fabric behind here and leave about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I can get in there with my stiletto and pry these papers out. That way you don't have to worry about having these in there, but right now you're kind of like, well, why? how do I get my papers out? So that's how you get your papers out. If you want some more detail and actually see how it goes, it's in my removing your papers video on my YouTube channel. But as of now, my A3 block is complete and we'll go on to the next one.